I got into 3D printing in 2008 or so. I was really excited about the RepRap project. And um, obviously I wanted one, but you can really get one. So I decided the logical next step would be to make one myself. So uh, the first thing I needed was a mill. So I bought a mill, CNC kitted it, built the electronics, wrote the firmware. I actually wrote a compiler for a programming language to write the firmware in, because that seemed like a really reasonable idea. Uh, <laughs> Two years later, I had a lot of experience of building mills and very little experience of running mills, uh, except for short periods of terror with one hand on the emergency shutoff. Uh, and I had no experience of 3D printing. So I bought a MakerBot 419, uh, the cupcake, one of the first ones which you were supposed to mod. Really cool thing. Uh, assembly with my, my then one-year-old daughter. We all all super excited to get started and found no tools to create models. So all this digital fabrication thing, it really depends on your ability to be able to, to describe the actual model because the computer which drives the machine is not gonna understand anything else. You can't, a shop bot, you, I don't think you can drive by hand, but the mill you can actually operate by hand. It's really fun, but a 3D printer doesn't work that way. You need a digital model. So uh, I complained about it for a year. Uh, I noticed a lot of other people complaining about it. And, and eventually like, sat down with my co-founder and, and figured out that we might actually be in a position to solve this problem. Um, so what I'm going to tell you, talk to you about today is um, Tinkercad. It's a super, super simple tool for, for creating 3D models. And more specifically, it's a tool for creating 3D models for fabrications. There's a lot of different 3D design tools on the market, but the, the key thing is you need a tool that can actually create descriptions of physical objects. Most tools are what they call surface tools, which is good for images or computer graphics and stuff, but you feed one of those into a shop bot, it's not gonna do anything sensible. So, um, right. Um, Last year, a bunch of interesting things happened. So I come from Google. At Google, the solution to everything is throw 10,000 computers at it. Um, what happened last year was that this finally became possible to do in a browser. There was a bunch of technologies that came out that made it possible to do a browser or cloud-based CAD. That's what Tinkercad is. Um, to show you how that changes how CAD works, I want to tell the story of Katie. Um, this is Katie's first model. Uh, as far as a CAD, first CAD model goes, this is actually pretty impressive. Uh, most first CAD models tends to be uh, one primitive, like maybe a cube. And, and if you're really, really experimental, a second primitive, like maybe a sphere. But Katie actually got quite far. Like she, she sat down, she created something which was like, had some form and, and you know, it's quite lovable if you, if you want to. Um, the interesting thing is what happened over the next few days. And this is, I think, where, where the sea change has happened. Um, this is the model Katie did a few days later. Um, we ran a competition with MakerBot to make a chess set, and Katie wanted to, to take part in it. So she created a chess set based on buildings, right? So there's the there's the Leaning Tower of Pisa, there's the Space Needle, the top of Empire State Building, uh, there's the Big Ben. And uh, it's, I think one of the key challenges we're facing when we're growing this community is specifically this. We're gonna have a lot of people who come in who don't know how stuff happens, and obviously like we need to get them up to speed really quickly. Um, Katie, uh, goes to Marymount, which is an all-girls school in New York City. This is actually Katie's older classmate working one of the maker bots. Katie is a fifth grader. Uh, we keep saying we've, we've developed a CAD tool for people so that if, if you're under 16, it takes you two minutes. If you're over 16, it takes you 10 minutes to learn it. <laughs> this, this is, I, I'm only half joking. Fifth graders have a very, very short attention span. Um, there's a few things. This is basically the editor. It's a simple thing. Simple thing. You drop shapes onto the, onto the plane. You can group them together. Uh, you can make them into either holes or additions. You can, any, group, uh, any group can be turned into a hole, which basically lets you create arbitrarily complex tools for yourself to work with. 
really simple. Uh, the secret sauce is obviously we use a lot of computers to make this, this as easy in the browser. Um, the second thing is this is about the community. Mm, the piece on the left started as a chess piece. Uh, the piece in the middle is actually a planter for a carnivorous plant. And the piece on the right is, is part of the planter thread that started going on. So by default, all things in Tinkercad are published under Creative Commons, publicly available. It's really easy to just click. You click one button, two seconds later, you have a copy of, of somebody else's design, and you see how they made it, and you can continue desi designing it. All this happened within the space of a few hours, a few days. So we see a lot of quick evolution happening. Uh, the thing we alluded to several times here is what happens when we get this out to everybody? Like, there's tons of Katie's out there. There are tons of grandmothers out there. There are tons of people who haven't had these tools earlier. Uh, we want to basically enable them to do that. Uh, I think the magic starts happening when we see those 40 million people get in and start designing these things. Thanks.